So we know that cancer is not always caused by the same process in everyone. As, a, as an oncologist, it's common for somebody to ask, how did I develop this cancer? We know that there are many risk factors that are well known, but there are also a growing list of risk factors and some of these are modifiable. So for example, this is a diagram that states that cancer is a progression that develops in part from host factors, diet and lifestyle factors, and environmental factors, and they're listed there. So many times we think of the host factors such as genetics, right? And it's becoming more and more well established that there are modifying factors from your diet and lifestyle, which are becoming more and more of a common cause of cancer. Uh, and then there are environmental factors, which differ depending on where you live, uh, what part of the world you are, and we're also learning more about that over time. I like to think of this that, you know, this is more of a, a, a combination of different factors. You, you may have one factor, for example, you may have a gene that predisposes you to cancer, but that doesn't determine exactly when you're going to get cancer or even if you're going to get cancer. So they're obviously modifying factors on top of baseline factors, and some of these factors will uh, combine with each other in various ways. So not to think of this linearly, but what are the things that we can modify? We know that if we look around the world, this was a study looking at the global burden, the cancer attributable risk factors that were modifiable. The number one cause is smoking, and this looks on the left at 2010 and on the right at 2019. So smoking is still the number one modifiable risk factor uh, for the contribution to cancer. Alcohol use is number two, and a growing uh, uh, risk factor is having high body mass index and higher fasting plasma glucose, metabolic risk factors, and this is especially the case in the Western world. So this was a study showing that uh, in 2009 at least, the amount of people who smoke is actually going down, which is a great thing and has been a public health measure. That's not the case around the world, but in the US, smoking rates are starting to go down. But the percentage of people who are overweight is going up. And this is actually uh, causing a decrease in life expectancy. We know that the prevalence of overall obesity and se severe obesity is going up and is really forecasted to continue to go up in the, in the future. And you can just look at the colors here, you know, what used to be the prevalence for overall obesity, meaning a BMI greater than 30 in 1990, is now pretty much the prevalence of, um, of severe obesity. If you look at the 2030 estimate, it looks very similar to the picture for the prevalence of overall obesity in 1990. There are many factors that contribute to this, including genetics, socioeconomic status is obviously a modifier, dietary patterns, physical inactivity and sedentary behavior, insufficient sleep contributes to this. Uh, there are prenatal and postnatal influences. We're learning more about the microbiome and how that modifies uh, uh, inflammation and obesity. There's stress and behavioral influences, as well as a growing list of environmental causes, including something called met metabolism disrupting chemicals.